Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? Man, it's here. Hey, what's going on, guys? How we doing? Man, it's Anelli here. So today I want to help uh, players out. I've been getting this question a lot lately, especially with high school baseball now starting. Um, and what I'm getting from players is that they're successful. They've been successful so far off of T-work and flips, soft toss. But once they start getting into the game or once they start facing, you know, a, a batting practice pitcher that's putting a little bit of, of uh, extra speed on the ball, they're really, really struggling. And they're asking, how do I take my practice swing from T-work and soft toss and flips into the game? Why am I not being successful? So I want to talk about this, and we've talked a little bit in the past about it, but I want to give you some more thoughts. Uh, in my opinion, there's a couple of things, okay? The first thing is, uh, and this is probably the number one thing that I see, is that if you have a swing flaw, you have something in your swing that is not giving you a path. Typically, it's going to be, well, it can be a few things. Well, let's start with path, okay? So when I'm looking at swings, I think one of the most important things is bat path. What is your barrel doing through the hitting zone? If you're able to have a barrel that's going to get behind the ball and stay through the ball, stay through the hitting zone, you're going to have a better chance of consistently squaring up the ball. You're going to have a better chance of being on time than someone that doesn't, okay? So very simple. First thing is look at your barrel path. I want my barrel to work behind the ball, slightly up through the hitting zone as much as I can. Remember, the ball is being pitched from an elevated mound overhand to a catcher that squatted. The ball is being thrown slightly down. I want to try to match that plane with my barrel. All right, so I want to get my barrel turned deep, and I want to get my barrel turned up into the ball. That's going to improve my timing because as I turn and get behind the ball, if I'm a little late, I can make contact. If I'm on time, I can make contact. If I'm a little early, I can make contact. Right? So now, you've got to think about that pitch. Right? As that pitch comes in, there's multiple points on that pitch path that I can hit the ball. Right? There's not a single point. Right? There's multiple points. And I don't know what point I'm going to hit that ball on. And so if I can get behind the ball, right? if this, if this is the pitch coming slightly down, I'll do it from this angle. This is the pitch coming slightly down to me. I want to be able to hit that ball somewhere along this line, one of these points. Again, if I can get my barrel turned behind the ball early and I can get it on path, well, I can make contact. If I'm back here and I'm a little late, but I'm on path, I can make contact. I can make contact here. I can make contact here. If I don't do that, if I have a swing that's too steep, it's coming in like this, well, then I'm in and out of the zone quick. I can only make contact at a couple of points here. My hitting window has shrunk. If I lose my barrel and I'm coming like this, well, I'm not on path back here. I finally get on path here, but then I'm off the ball there. So same thing. My hitting window is shrunk. I want a barrel that can get on plane with the pitch early and stay on plane for a long time. That gives me the best chance at making contact. That will improve my timing. right? It will improve my ball flight. It will allow me to hit more line drives because I'm on path with the ball. Okay, so look at your path. I want to be from the inside, right? I want to be able to cover the entire hitting zone. If I'm outside and across, well, then I can't cover the entire hitting zone, right? But if I can turn my barrel deep and be from the inside and then swing out away from my body, so I have a path that's from in to out, not a push out there, but a deeper turn from the inside and then staying through the hitting zone, Again, now I'm able to cover the ball away, middle, and in. I can let the, butt, the barrel out if it's away. I can let the barrel out here if it's middle, and I can stay in here if it's inside. So now, with your path, I'm behind the ball. I have better timing. I have better ball flight. I cover the entire zone. I can hit away, middle, and in. All right, so that's the first thing, and that's really, really important. If you don't have that, there's something in your swing that's causing your path to not be what you want. You might be okay on the tee. You might be okay on flips, right? On the tee, we talked about how, let's put the tee here. We just talked about how 
If you have a barrel that's not on path for a long time, you have a small hitting window, right? Just one point. Well, if I put a ball on that tee, well, that's just one point. And so I could hit that ball and not have a good path. Even on a flip, right? The ball's coming in really, really slow. It's coming in from a couple of feet. I don't have to have a great path to hit that ball. Even front flip sometimes. So you might be able to hit the ball okay off of tee, off of flips, off of soft toss. And you might be all right. And you might think, man, my swing's pretty good. But when you go into a game, especially into a game, or even off of BP, where now all of a sudden the distance gets greater, timing becomes a little bit tougher. Then a game, multiple pitches. You cannot, you're not going to be very successful covering multiple pitch speeds if you don't have a really good path. All right? So that's an easy one. Yeah, you, can, you might be successful in a controlled environment off the tee and flips, but it's going to be hard to be consistent in a game. All right? So first thing, swing flaw, look at your path. Also, when it comes to swing flaws, swing quickness. How quickly can I get my barrel to get launched and get to the ball? All right. So if there's something in your swing, and again, I can't go over, everyone can be a little different. Now, I believe in certain core principles of the swing. If you guys checked out our other videos, you know, probably know what they are by now. If you haven't, go check out our other hitting videos. But there could be something going on in your swing that's not allowing you to be able to launch the barrel when you want to launch it. That's really, really important. Right? When you get into a game, all of a sudden there's time constraints. So you can't take all day. Right? Your barrel has to be quick. You have to be able to launch your barrel when you want to launch it, and it's got to happen quick. It can't be a long, slow approach to the ball. And so if it is long and slow, or you, it's just not quick, right? It's just not very quick, you can still survive off of a tee because there's no time constraint. The ball's sitting there. It's not moving. You can have the longest swing in the world. You can still hit the ball. Even off of soft toss or flips, the ball's not coming in very fast, Okay. But in a game, you get time constraints. You got four tenths of a second, depending on what level you are. Let's just say four tenths of a second if you're playing at a pretty high level. And so I need to be able to see the ball, recognize the pitch, and then swing all in a very, very short amount of time. And so if I have a swing flaw that's going to create a long, slow swing, and I'm not going to have any quickness, right? I'm not going to be successful. I might be successful here, off of this stuff, not successful in the game. So that's really, really important. First look at your swing. And hopefully some of our other videos, a lot of our videos, we've made hundreds of them, will help you start to look at your swing and say, okay, what is it about my swing that's not allowing me to have a good path or to have quickness? And then you've got to figure out how do I fix that stuff? How do I get some more quickness? How do I get a better path? That alone will be able to take you from the tee to the game and be more successful. All right, so that's, that's one thing. Now, maybe it's not a swing flaw, okay? The second thing is, there, there does take some practice. You have to practice off of live, off of some velocity, not just off of tees and flips and soft toss, okay? So we break up our practice into kind of two different portions. One is, we're going to work on our mechanics, our swing mechanics, okay? So we're going to work on our swing. That's where we'll do a lot of work off of drills without any time constraints, right? So we can really focus on whatever it is we're doing in the swing, right? So that we can get a better path and we can organize our body in a better way, get loaded on time to be able to have some quickness with our swing. That's important to do. We do that at, at, at the beginning, especially usually at the beginning of our practice. But then we transition over to now let's get more into a game type atmosphere. Let's get into more things where there are time constraints, where we can't just take forever. We have to be quick, right? And so we'll go machine work, we'll turn the volume up, we'll go live BP, so we'll go uh, pitchers pitching against hitters, we'll go batting practice, but not just your typical batting practice where, you know, your uh, coach is just lobbing the ball in there. We'll bring the L screen up, we'll have pitcher, our our batting practice pitchers try to get guys out. We'll mix in multiple pitches. So all of that stuff is simulating a game. And so one, it works as kind of a test. Let's see if your swing is going to work in that situation. right? But two, it then trains you for the game. okay? So 
Baseball sometimes, I'm not saying all practice needs to be like this. That's why we split it up. But baseball is a sport where a lot of times we practice below game speed. A lot of teams practice, a lot of players practice below game speed with a lot of tee and a lot of flips and a lot of soft toss. And then they wonder why they can't adjust into the game because they don't practice it enough. So you've got to practice against some challenging stuff. Try to make practice harder than the game. Now I can work on getting myself ready to hit and getting myself ready to hit on time. Getting into a position, a good position on time where I can then launch the barrel uh, and have a good path and be quick. And so that takes some practice. Because again, in all these easy drills with the T work and the flips and everything, there's no constraint on me, so I don't really have to be on time. I can take all day long. But in a game, I'm now at the mercy of the pitcher. I have to get in rhythm with them, and I have to be on time with him. So I need to make sure that I'm getting myself into a position where I can launch the barrel when I want to launch it. Okay? And you need to practice that. You can't wait until the game. You can't do this stuff and even just do a little easy BP and then think in the game you're going to be able to just magically turn on. Now maybe if you've just got, I mean you've just got a great, great swing, you've got a lot of natural ability, maybe you can get into a game and make it work. But I would rather practice it. Practice that type of situation so you can work on getting your body ready to go and being ready on time consistently. I think that's really, really important. So hopefully that will help you guys out if you are struggling in games you're struggling to take your practice to the game look at the way you're practicing look at your swing those are going to be the two spots that i think you'll be able to hopefully make some tweaks to and it'll help you be more consistent in the game so let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below subscribe to the channel share the video with all your friends thank you to our patrons on patreon for supporting the channel don't forget to hit the notification bell so you will get an alert every time we throw a new video up. And that's all we have. We'll talk to you later.